Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee, and I'm starting a new video series on flashing your factory Harley-Davidson radio. Now, this video is going to pertain to 2014 to 2024 models, as long as you don't have the new body style in 24. So it's going to be Electric Glide, Street Glide, Ultras, and Road Glides, CVO and non-CVO models. If you have one of these factory radios, whether that be the 4.3 Boom, the 6.5 GT, or the newer GTS style radio, when you do an audio upgrade, you're gonna to wanna to know, do I need to flash my radio and which one is the right one? So in this video, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna go over when we flash our radio and when we don't flash our radio. We don't want you to go down the road of spending money you didn't need to. And later on in this video series, I'm gonna show you how to pull what flash and see what's currently in your radio to even know if that's necessary. So I think this four video series is gonna be very, very helpful for you it's going to help people not spend money they don't need to, but it's also going to tell you when you need to to get the most out of that audio system that you just spent all that money on to upgrade. So keep watching as we go over more. So the purpose of this video is going to be to tell you when you do or do not flash your stock radio. I'm also going to go over what happens when we do that flash. So let's talk about when we do not flash our radio. So if you have a street glide, road glide, or maybe you have an electric glide, we're going to leave ultras out for right now. If you have something that only has two speakers in the front fairing, you're only going to flash the radio if you add an amplifier. So if you're looking at just upgrading your two speakers with the stock stereo, you're not gonna be doing a flash because when you flash your radio correctly, you actually lower the output of the radio for an amp. We don't want you to do that because that would cut your volume down if you don't have the desire to add an amplifier at this time. One of the other things you would flash it for, the only thing you would do is you could activate Apple CarPlay uh, on that same bike without actually changing the output of the radio. So what you do is you'd flash on the whim with a techno research tool. This would trick the radio into thinking there was a Bluetooth headset or a mic of some sort connected so that your Apple CarPlay will work without a whim or headset connected to the bike. So the only time I would tell you to flash would be to activate CarPlay on those two speaker non-amp systems. And we would not flash the radio output. Now, the other time you would do it, if you were adding a tour pack to that bike, and you're now gonna add rear speakers, but no amplifier. Uh, or if you wanted to add lid speakers with no amplifier. Now, I highly, highly uh, suggest that you add an amp anytime you're gonna add more speakers. But if you wanted to activate the rear channels of the radio, so Harley from the factory, they wanna trap you where you have to go back to the dealership with any upgrade you're gonna do. And so they do not even turn on the rear speakers unless rear speakers are installed in the bike. So the wiring is there, the radio has the outputs in it. They're just turned off digitally. So you can turn on and flash a four speaker, no amp flash on your bike. That's only gonna activate the rear speakers. It's gonna enable a fader on the radio and turn on those rear channels. So if you're gonna add rear speakers to a bike that did not have them, you would wanna flash a non-amped four speaker flash. Now, one of the reasons we're making this video is there's a lot of people that ask us why and when. And we're following, I'm in active in many groups online, and we see a lot of misinformation. A lot of people don't understand the terminology that Harley uses with the flashes. And another thing that people make the mistake of is they think when they're gonna get a flash done that they can return to their Harley dealership and they can get it done. So I'm gonna tell you the situations when Harley can flash your radio and the ones when they can't. And then we'll move into when we need to flash our radio for audio and so on. But if you go to your Harley-Davidson dealership, they're going to be limited. Somewhere around 2019, Harley-Davidson Corporate locked the digital tech tool that they use. And they made it where you can only flash for the setup that's in the bike currently. So that was a huge limitation. So if you have a two-speaker bike, they can flash on the rear speakers because they don't have to see anything on data lines for that. So they can do the non-amp flashes, no problem. They can do what they call the Rockford Fosgate flash, which I'll tell you later why that is not the flash you wanna do when you install an amplifier. But the Rockford flash is the factory four speaker no amp flash. That's all it is. 
So it is the same exact setup that would have been on an Ultra Limited or a Tri-Glide or a Road Glide Limited from the factory. That's all that flash is going to do. They can do some amplified flashes. That would be the Boom Stage 1, the Boom Stage 2, or even a flash for HD audio by Rockford. But they can only do that if that factory amplifier is plugged into the computer and seen on the data lines. So all the flashing that we're going to do as we go through this video series and we talk about, they're all factory flashes. Nobody has created a new flash. These all came from Harley. They were all already in your radio. And all we're doing when we flash it or select that correct EQ tune is we're selecting or checking a box in the background saying this is what we want the radio to do now. They're all factory. So no matter what name we call it, understand they were already in there. We're not jailbreaking it. We're not rewriting it. So with that being said, when you go to your, all the flashing we're going to do with the techno research tool is going to be amplified flashes when we add an amplifier. But your Harley dealer cannot do those flashes unless there's an amp installed and it must be a factory amp, which is not what you're going to want to use when you do your upgrade. So if you were to install a Boom Stage 1 or Boom Stage 2 system into your bike, of course your dealership could then flash it. But you want to put an aftermarket amp from one of the many companies that make much, much better amplifiers, you're not going to be able to get the correct flash done at your local dealership unless, let me put this out there, some dealerships have realized this need and they have purchased a Techno Research flash tool. So let's talk about where we can find out if they've got that. You can go to technoresearch.info. It's a website uh, where you can put in your zip code and you can find all of the dealers around you that have a techno research tool. If your local dealership is not on that list, they do not have the tool and they cannot do the correct flash. They also cannot activate your WIM unless a WIM is plugged in. And even then it's still limited to where you have to have a headset connected for CarPlay. So if you're wanting to add an aftermarket amp, or if you want to activate your Apple CarPlay, it must be done with a techno research tool. This is the only company that does this correctly and the only way that you can do it uh, and your dealership can do it if they've bought the tool. They most likely do not have it. A few of them do. So I always have to throw in those weird scenarios where it could be done there. So you're going to go to a techno research dealer of some sort. Now, Volunteer Audio, we are a dealer. We're the largest online authorized dealer for techno research. We sell and rent their tools. We're one of the few places that offer you the ability to use it and return it and get partial refund on that. So we won't go into pricing on that now, but that is available through us if you do not have a local dealer. All right, so there's another scenario when we would not flash our bike. I want to cover that quickly. If you have a Kenwood or a Hogtoons or a Wild Boar system, these are all made by Hogtoons, so they made the amplifier they designed their amplifier to automatically turn on when it's seen the signal of the factory radio when it has not been flashed. So you have to have what we call the non-amplifier flash in your radio uh, or with the factory default non-amped tune for those amps to work. Now, I wish we could flash it and still use them because it would sound better, uh, but they do some, some things inside their amp to try to compensate for the bass boost that's in there and the EQ changes and such. And they do a pretty good job of making something work without having to be flashed. It would work better if they would have made it where we could flash it. But if you flash your radio to one of the amplified flashes, the Kenwood, the Hogtoons, and the Wild Boar systems will no longer operate. Now, back to Wild Boar, they do have a system that requires a Wild Boar flash. The Techno Research Tool can do that flash. So if you decide to do the Wild Boar system, you would want to do the flash in the Techno Research Tool. We'll go over more details in a future video on what that flash does. We'll go over all of them. And I'll have a great database on our website at volunteeraudio.com where you can look at this information later instead of having to watch through this entire video. So you're not going to flash. Uh, just a quick recap of when we're not going to do any techno research flashing to our radio. We're not going to flash it if we're not adding an amplifier. We're not going to flash it if we are using the Kenwood, Wild Boar, or Hogtoons amplifiers. Those times you're not going to do it. Now, in a later video, I'm going to show you how to go into your radio, into the service menu, and pull your EQ.BIN file. This file tells you what flash is currently in the radio, and some of you that have a factory boom audio system do not need to flash your radio to upgrade your amplifier. And I'll give you all those codes to look up to see when you don't have to flash it. So in your case, you wouldn't need to flash it either. Now, every other scenario of replacing the stock audio system, 
and adding an aftermarket amplifier is going to need a flash of some sort done with a techno research tool. So I think I've covered all the things we don't need. So now let me tell you why we flash the radio. What are we doing? Because this term can be a little confusing. Flashing doesn't really make any sense. I, I, that's the word and the lingo that has been used for it. You're essentially deciding what the output of the radio is going to be. You're changing the output of the radio by selecting a box inside, and they call it the EQ bin file. We're changing that file. Now the word's been flashed. That's, the, that's what they go by. But we're gonna do four things at the same time. If we had a stock street glide, electric glide, or road glide with two factory speakers, when we flash our radio, we're turning on the rear speakers. So if we do an amplified flash, it's gonna turn on the rear speakers. We're gonna change the output of the radio. So the total power the radio puts out is actually lowered down to a more usable input for, a, for an aftermarket amp. So we're gonna have a cleaner signal, a more correct signal to feed into our aftermarket amp after flash. It's also gonna correct this crazy bass boost. Harley has this very, very large, it's 12 to 14 dB bass boost in the background of the radio that's trying to blow your speakers. It's actually at a frequency that most six and a half inch or five and a quarter inch speakers, which are stock, cannot handle without wanting to distort or even blow after long times of being played very loud with it. So we're gonna correct that so that when we put our new, better speakers in and our big amp, we're not amplifying that bass boost and trying to blow our new speakers. It's gonna make your system last a lot longer and sound much, much clearer while you're riding. Now, the last thing it does is Harley makes it where the EQ changes when the bike starts. We'll cover that in a later video. I'll show you what it does exactly and how that the flashes affect that. Because with different flashes, we change whether or not the EQ is done away with uh, or that change in EQ. The flash that Volunteer Audio has, if you go on your techno research tool and you flash the Volunteer Audio recommended flash, it's gonna make it where it no longer changes when the bike starts. So they have one EQ tune when it's not running, so it sounds good in the dealership. They have another EQ tune when you start the bike up and you head down the road. This makes it difficult to set an aftermarket amp up to sound good in both scenarios. So we're gonna do away with that. We're gonna actually flatten the EQ and get rid of that bass boost, and we're gonna make it where we have the same EQ and the same output, whether the bike is running, engine running, or engine not running. That's what's gonna happen when we flash the radio, that's why we do it. So those four things, quick recap, turning on rear speakers, lowering the output of the radio to a usable input for our amp, fixing that bass boost and flattening the EQ, and then making the EQ where it no longer changes when the engine runs. These are all very important things, and if you don't have the right flash in your radio, your system does not sound like it should. It's also not gonna last as long as it should, and it's not gonna be as loud and as clear as what you paid for. So it's very, very important that we do the correct flash. There's a third scenario. The third scenario is I'm replacing my factory radio. So at Volunteer Audio, we sell the Soundstream Reserve lineup of radios. They make several for this 14 to 23, 24 model bikes. They're great radios, and if you're installing one of those, there is no need to flash the radio in your bike because when you replace the radio, all those limitations that Harley has put on your sound are no longer there. So many, many of you have chosen to replace your radio. If you've replaced your radio, this video means nothing to you. You don't need it, don't have to continue on. Now, my plan is to continue on with this series, and I'm gonna go over a couple other things with you. First off, I'm gonna go over how to pull the eq.bin file out of your stock radio, and I'm gonna tell you what that file means. We're gonna decipher it. We're gonna show you where you can find that data, and you can determine what's already in it, so you can know a couple things. What's in there now if you've never flashed it? If the shop you use did the correct flash for the scenario you're using, or do, is the factory flash that's in it good enough does it meet the criteria to replace your amplifier? So that's gonna be for some of you guys that might have had boom one, because most of the flashes we wanna use are gonna be a boom one flash. So we'll share that information in an upcoming video. I'm also gonna go in then, and I'm gonna go through each one of the flashes that are available. And we're gonna go name by name, and I'm gonna tell you what they do. Because we've done a lot of research here at Volunteer Audio, I don't tell you to do something that we haven't fully checked out and saw what that scenario does and I'm gonna to explain to you why the Volunteer Audio Flash that we've chosen is the best flash for you to pick. And there's several others that are gonna be equivalent anytime that you're gonna replace and add, either replacing a boom amp, boom two amp, Rockford amp, or if you're gonna be putting in a new aftermarket amp, why this is the correct flash for you. So in that video, we're gonna go over those details. 
I'm going to show you what each one does, which one turns on rear speakers, which ones don't, the total output of each one, how distorted is that signal, what does the bass boost do, does the EQ change when running, we'll cover all of that. And I'll show you which one of those names are actually just a factory flash, because like I told you before, they're all just a rename. Whether that says Wild Boar or Volunteer Audio or Sounds, one of these mini companies that has a flash there, all of those flashes equate to a factory Harley flash that the Harley dealer can't do. <laughs> so it gets a little bit confusing in that sense. So we're also going to go over which flash is best for you. Uh, and that's going to be the video where I go over what each one does. And then the last one, the fourth video in this series, probably going to take about two weeks to get all these up for you, is going to be how to download the software, the requirements for the technical research tool. You need a PC. It's got to be running newer Windows software, Windows 7 or newer, and you have to have internet access. If you have a PC laptop with Windows-based computer and it has internet, you're going to be good. That's the tool you need. But we're going to show you how to download the software, how to connect your tool to your bike, and how to do that flash. It's a very simple process, but I want to break that down in its own video. So I hope this video has been informative. I will tell you that one of the things I want to make sure we know is no matter what Harley calls that flash, that means absolutely nothing. If it says it's one amp, two amp, no amp, you need to watch the next video where I go over what each one of those do because a lot of people really are confused in their mind. They think they have to have a two amp flash if they're running one, uh, two amps only. And a lot of cases, these words that Harley chose are confusing. And when we pick the right one, there's only one that works for all of the amp systems. No matter how many speakers you have, no, how many, no matter how many amps you're installing, the one flash is correct. And we'll go over it and we'll show you which one. So no longer is it a secret. We're unveiling and lifting uh, this secret that Harley has. And we're going to give you the information so that you know which flash is correct. And you can be the expert on this now because we're going to give you this knowledge. Volunteer Audio, we want to enable you to make the right decisions. We're gonna share this knowledge. It doesn't cost you anything to watch our videos. We spend a lot of time going over our research and we never keep secrets. We share it with you. Um, so you're gonna be the expert just like we are. Thank you for watching. Follow Volunteer Audio on YouTube or Facebook. By doing so, you're gonna get knowledge that most other places are gonna try to keep secret. They're gonna to try to get, charge you a lot to do installs instead of showing you how to do it. We're gonna do step-by-step -step install videos. We're gonna show you new products as they come out and we're gonna give you the knowledge it takes to pick the right system the first time for your Harley Davidson. We're also gonna show you how to use those products after you have it installed. So it's a wealth of knowledge, it's free to you, and you need to subscribe and follow so you get those videos as they come out. Also like this video by doing so, it's gonna move us up in search results, it's gonna help other people find our video series, it's gonna help them, it doesn't cost you anything, and it helps us, and we appreciate that. If you have any comments, questions, put them below. We're quick to reply. We're quick to answer. And you can also call us at one 30 audio By calling us, you're going to get a knowledgeable sales or tech staff uh, member, an uh, actual person here in the U.S. that works for Volunteer Audio, real people who are very knowledgeable that are going to help you pick the right system or answer your questions as we go through this process so you don't waste money. We, we love to talk to you. We love to hear about your bike, your build, your budget, and we love helping you pick the right system for you. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, God bless.